Um, first of all, um, thanks, Les Concorla. Um, which minister has taken it? Um, my understanding it was Minister Noonan that was over. Right. Okay. Um, at least you're well familiar with the area, anyhow, Minister. Um, first of all, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'm bringing this motion to the Dáil. Um, this motion is in relation to the, na the nature restoration law. But from the outset, I want to make it very clear that any of us that signed this motion were not against nature. We actually live in nature, every one of us. We promote nature. We're brought up with nature. We come from the land and uh, from knee high. We were always told to make sure and uh, make sure and look after birds, bees, whatever, and we have done that. So I don't want this uh, narrative to go out that we're opposed to this, but it's in how uh, proposals will affect communities where we come from. And the reality of this proposal under the Nature Restoration Law, um, as set out by the Commission, and there are a few different proposals, I want to make that clear, and this has caused a lot of confusion. There is a proposal from the EU Commission. There is also a Council of Ministers proposal. Um, and there is talk as well that there is a Parliament proposal. But um, look at the, the two heavyweight proposals at the moment is the Commission proposal and the Council of Ministers proposal. Um, I think when we set out to put this motion together, the three deputies, I think we've done it in as fair a way as possible. Um, and it is disappointing to see that after hearing for months and months, it is disappointing that the government is actually uh, putting in an amendment to this uh, motion um, for the simple reason. I have heard over the last four or five weeks of the word called scaremongering, of the words called misinformation, um, and the one thing that we wanted clarified, and clarified very clearly, that a government would commit that any farmers and privately owned land, regardless of which proposal would be there, would not be uh, forced to re-wet their ground. And unfortunately, when you look at the amendment that came in yesterday, um, it in no way puts that to bed for the farming communities right around the country. And what we must remember is that um, from the top of Donegal down to the parts of West Cork, out as far as actually Kildare and um, down to Monaghan, Cav and all that area, uh, these are the areas that's going to be affected. And if you look at the Commission's proposal, and I want to be very clear on each proposal that I'm talking about, the Commission's proposal, um, if you're looking at the re-wetting of agricultural drain land. If you're looking at our total proposal, it is about 300,000 hectares. Um, I know the Council of Ministers are trying to bring that down, and I acknowledge that. But if you look at the Commission proposal, it would mean that agricultural drain peatland, and let no government minister stand up here and state that they own agricultural drain peatland, because they don't, because it's actually the EU that gave farmers grants years ago to drain and shore that land for them to farm. Um, in the 80s especially, it was done. Um, and that land was brought on to basically, it was like three legs in a stool to balance the stool. A lot of farmers were small farmers um, in a lot of areas that struggled to make a living off the land. And we'll probably hear today that the you know, that they're better off to go down the road of re-wetting that there's been more out of it or whatever. Hills are green far away. The Habitats Directive came into Ireland. I remember being told by our now President Michael D. Higgins that we, it wouldn't affect anyone. But then we saw that the turf cutting communities in different places were told that they couldn't cut turf. Farmers were told, don't worry, while you have the designation on it, you'll be paid. And you know what, for the first five years they paid them, there's no doubt about that. But then they went into the boroughs and they left the farmers high and dry with 36 different regulations on their lands. And remember, if you re wet something and let no one, I've been part of it, and the minister, Minister Noonan, will be well familiar with this. 
I've worked with the national parks right around this country, re-wetting and going to farmers and putting their mind at ease where, and in fairness to the national parks, and I'll give the Minister credit on this, their people went house by house and talked to them, and I will acknowledge that. And that needed to be done on the raised bog where they were re-wetting them. And we worked with them, and it has been very successful, and I think you will acknowledge that. So it's not a thing that we're against any, all of this, but I am totally against re-wetting agricultural drain peatland for the simple reason, once that goes back to where it was, let no one go telling me that you can re-wet it a few inches. I've heard people saying, oh, well, this doesn't mean now that you couldn't uh, have cattle or whatever walking on it. If you were to bring peatland back to what it was, and I've learned from the scientists and the national parks had pretty good ones, you have to bring the water level, level with it. You don't flood it. That word should never be used in my opinion. You don't flood, but you should, you have to moist it on top. Well, don't go telling me that a bullock or a cow or a yo or whatever will be running around. I heard that what the plan would be, you could have water buffaloes. Now, we'd look well going down that road. And the problem is then that the, you will hear that, oh, well, sure, look, we look after the farmer. And yeah, but what scheme is beyond five years? Because if you read the Commission's proposal, once it's done, it's done. Bye bye, close the gate, that's it. And if you look at the Commission's proposal, and it's not Michael Fitzmaurice or Marion Harkin or Michael McNamara or others being unrealistic. If you look at the Commission's proposal, fisheries have turned round when it went into their committee and kicked it out the door. Agriculture have done the same. It's split down the middle, which is very unusual within, and Deputy Harkin knows an awful lot more about uh, Europe than I do. Um, but it's split down the middle, which is very unusual because generally when a proposal goes in, I think there's rapporteurs or something they call them, that try and put it through. And I think a message needs to go out from government and from all politicians that in Ireland this year, for any farmer that wants to comply or wants to get their, what we used to call the single farm payment, it is now called BIS, that you have to put a minimum of 10% of your land aside, what we call space for nature. And if you don't do that, you don't get the eco scheme now. And farmers are doing that. And in actual fact, I've looked at farmers in the west of Ireland, and I've seen it up to 27 and 28% space for nature. They are making uh, their effort in that. But if you look at the Commission's proposal, 10% of it would be specially protected. And if you look up the meaning of that, like we, have, we have special protected areas at the moment under the Habitat Directive, but the, under this new one, it's basically saying very clearly you couldn't even walk on it. Um, and in fairness to the Council of Ministers, I've looked at your proposal. It's a more realistic proposal. It brings it probably to rewetting about 95, 90, 95,000 hectares. Um, but the problem, and, and, and you have stated clearly that Quilcha and um, Bornemona would cover that. But the problem I would say back to you, Minister, is I have correspondence from Bornemona who are stating they estimate about 40,000 hectares is what they left. I have talked to Quilcha. Quilcha, between rewilding and everything, have 30,000 30, hectares. Um, but all I'm worried about is the gap after that. And no one is creating hysteria that this is going to be coming tomorrow or next week. I know that Bournemouth can pick up the slack on a certain amount of it. But under the proposals at the moment, and even the Council of Ministers' proposals, if you look at there are still obligations on rewilding hills. And every one of us comes from areas where there is hills. Um, and that needs teasing out. And it needs to be stated clearly on it that no privately owned hill or um, lowland 
would be um, you'd be obliged to do it. And then down the road, and we've been very realistic about this, that if a government, whatever government down the road, or next week if they want to bring it in, bring in want to bring in a scheme for 30 years or 35 years of a constant scheme of a voluntary thing, well, I, I won't object. That's entirely up to a, a government if to do that. But you have to have a clear path. And people might say, well, sure, if farmers got a few quid, Michael, why would you be against it? The big problem that I see is that when you come from our, the communities that we come from, there are full townlands, whether people like it or don't like it, that are basically peachy soil, land reclaimed, farmers making a living out of it, rearing families, sending kids to school, going down to the local shop, going to the local hardware. It's a thing what we call community. And the fear that is in it, and this, this is the facts. Every year, and we know the age profile of farmers, and every one of us in this doll, or, and, and there are good schemes for young farmers, are trying to make sure that we encourage youngsters to take over. Because every door closed in a community or in a local area is another bang to that community. And, it, and as, if doors close, so what we are trying to do, and in fairness, there's the derelict properties grant and there's all the different things um, that is trying to bring people back. But if you end up that you don't have to look at cattle, sheep, cows, or even if you wanted to plant vegetables. Now, a lot of it wouldn't be fit for it, just that you know. And if you look at the area involved, it would be, um, for, it would be areas that, where there'd be a lot of suckler cows or a lot of sheep. That's the predominant area. And let no one say to me, like we look at the forestry targets and we look at what the commission proposed, that you'd be taking out the goods of two million acres. Let no one tell me that it's going to be the golden veil that you'll go down and start rewetting because Jesus, the soil quality is good. It's not going to be plains and mead where there's good quality land. But you look at the area concerned. You look at the map the other day of the water quality. You could see where red was and blue was and whatever. Have a look at the map of the peachy soil nature. You go to the top of Donegal, you come out Mana and Cav in that area, you come down Longford, you come down to Offaly, you go out a bit of Kildare, and you kick in all the west. You go down to Kerry, you have Clare, you have parts of Tipperary. For the, what I'm talking, okay, you have pockets in other places, and you have parts of West Cork. But outside of that, you have smaller pockets. I'm not saying that there isn't other places. But the vast majority of that is going to be in that area. And if you're bringing in legislation, those people are going to be more adversely affected. And a, a, an amendment that, in fairness, Sinn Féin put into it, they have talked about the social and economic to do an analysis. The EU talk about a social... It's, it's, it's kangaroo court stuff what the EU done. To talk about a, a, a social and economic analysis. They ring up a few people and that's it. Where was it done to the people in those areas? It wasn't done. And I would ask the government to have a rethink about rejecting what they did today about putting in their amendment because I think what we have said is very clear. I think we're realistic and we're, we're reasonable people. But I would ask the government one thing, that whatever negotiations is going on in Europe, and like this promise has been made at the moment, who knows what will get through Parliament? No one knows. Because it's treat Lum and treat Lee, this one and that one. No one knows, and I don't think anyone can put their hand in their heart and say, with the best will in the world. I think that the Council of Ministers one is the most reasonable proposal. I think you need to tweak it, because out there the farming community are watching. And I think you have to give them those assurances, Minister. It's the one thing that I would ask for to make sure and say clearly that we'll put into any legislation that no privately owned land unless we bring out a voluntary scheme ourselves. And I think that's very important. And I'll finish later on. Deputy Pringle has to go talking now. Thank you.